whoa, they're going to kill us. Well, <laughs> they're going to dominate. But In this video, we'll be testing the same neurotechnology device featured on the Joe Rogan experience a few weeks ago that appeared to be enhancing the academic performance of Chinese students in combination with artificial intelligence. These headbands measure each student's level of concentration. Oh my the information God. is then directly sent to the teacher's computer and to parents. His guest, Dave Smith, rightly questioned the legitimacy of using neurotechnology in the classroom, stating that this concept might be a product of Chinese propaganda as if they were trying to appear more advanced than they really are. Okay, is this just like one random school is doing it this way in China and it's like a little experiment? Videos like this spark a lot of questions. Can this device read your thoughts? Does it improve your intelligence? How accurate is it? Would it improve grades in the classroom? And what are the rights of students choosing to use this type of technology? From the Wall Street Journal video, it appears that they primarily were using this device to track attention of the students. So to test it, I wore it during different tasks like watching a lecture, spacing out, relaxing, reading, and watching TikTok and YouTube videos to test its capabilities. The initial tests were quite promising. The light very reliably turned red when I was reading and blue when I had my eyes closed and tried to relax. Most would consider those two scenarios to be good boundaries in the extreme when it comes to differentiating levels of attention. But I needed more testing in the middle ground with nuances of attention in relation to what you would find in a classroom setting. This device uses a technology called electroencephalography or EEG, which picks up small changes in voltage from the brain with sensors that touch the scalp. These wearable EEG devices have actually been around for about 10 years and have received criticism in the past for not being accurate enough to be practical. But the latest third and fourth generation brain wearables like this one have had increasingly good hardware to detect brain signals and even better software guided by machine learning that makes the devices increasingly accurate and practical for everyday use. In the old days, the best that we could do is try to chop up the EEG signal into different speeds of voltage oscillation and try to correlate mental states with the ratios of those frequencies. But AI is starting to do a much better job of correlating complex signals with specific mental states. Ideally for attention, you would want to see faster frequencies like beta and gamma waves, whereas distraction and drowsiness would show up as slower waves like alpha and theta. But tracking attention is complicated and the brain patterns most often don't line up exactly with our human-made brainwave classification system. This is why AI and machine learning algorithms are helping immensely with brain state detection through biosignals that our human eyes and brain have difficulty picking out or recognizing due to the complexity of the signals. Honestly, it's a fascinating field and more and more people are paying attention. New technologies to observe and track human thoughts. But the idea that actual neurological activity could be interceded is extraordinary. I am not ready for what they are now calling a brain transparency. It's here. Don't dismiss this, it's here. It's, it's definitely changed the course of my career from being a clinical psychiatrist to becoming a neurotechnologist instead. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps us get more experts on the channel so you can learn more. For instance, we recently had the author of Battle for Your Brain, Professor Nita Farinhani on, who talked about the recent developments of these devices to increasing levels of practicality. Uh, Steve, that's a... a Professor at uh, Duke University, Nita Farahani. Nita Farahi, and she says that these technologies already exist. The miniaturization of electrodes, more universal placement at home, better integration with software that can test the fit, how good the responsiveness is. All of those advances, but especially the extraordinary advances in AI on training data and the ability to filter out noise and the combination of all of those things, are, that's the deciding factor about what makes it go mainstream. So what's the deal with this device specifically? Is this some kind of Chinese super device as suggested on the Joe Rogan podcast? Well, the story is actually more complicated than that. The parent company BrainCo was the result of a Chinese team chosen for development by the Harvard Innovation Lab here in the US. The company is actually now based in Somerville, Massachusetts, next to Harvard and MIT. I've had the president of the American division, Max Newland, on this channel multiple times to talk about the various applications of the Brain Code devices to include sports training they're doing with the American Olympic bobsled team and professional golfers on the PGA Tour. You have to simultaneously perform well at the game and remain calm. So what is that doing? That's training you to be on, to apply your mental abilities 
while simultaneously staying still on the inside. And in this way, we're able to help people transfer those skills. In China, they've sold tens of thousands of units through their Chinese partner company. In the States, they have an academic program called Neuromaker that is designed to teach students about neurotechnology and brain-computer interface. This hardware specifically is called Focus Calm, which is actually the second generation of the Focus One device used in the classroom videos filmed in China. So could these devices be used in the classroom for any potential benefit? The attention indicator turned red very reliably when I was reading and a little less reliably when I was doing active mental tasks, like watching very active and fast paced videos like a Star Wars battle or stimulating TikTok videos that would generate faster brain waves in my frontal lobe. It would also very reliably turn blue if I relaxed and closed my eyes, which is known to significantly increase slower brain waves like alpha. The challenge was in the middle ground of attention intensity. If I was watching Andrew Huberman's podcast, the light would turn orange, whether I was paying attention to the lecture or sort of looking off to the side and spacing out. I would say that it tended towards blue if I was spacing out and not actively engaged with the lecture, but this wasn't as reliable as the other indicators. And at no point did it turn red when I was watching the Huberman lecture to indicate that I was highly engaged. Maybe it would be different if I was there in person watching him lecture. I'm really not sure. And this is where the challenge would be if it were to be used in the classroom. If a child's light was orange, it would be difficult to tell if they were paying attention to the lecture or just daydreaming in their seat. So the initial tests of the light indicator actually tracking my attention were actually quite impressive, but there's still a lot of room for improvement. The more that we learn about the human brain, the more that we see that individuals have significant differences in what their brain waves mean in relation to their different cognitive states and activities. A generalized algorithm applied to a whole group will have moderate efficacy, but to get higher accuracy, these devices will need to be customized to the individual. Students would need to train with their individual devices over a period of time with machine learning algorithms to get the highest possible accuracy for tracking their attention. But these advances are coming quickly, and as AI becomes more powerful, we really are going to see neurotechnology become more and more mainstream. As Nita pointed out during our interview, most adults and children would not want to be wearing something like this all day for risk of discomfort, although I think this one is very comfortable, but also not to appear odd to our peers. But companies like OpenBCI and Neurable are incorporating similar EEG tech into VR, earphones, earbuds, which would be a lot more discreet and conducive to mainstream adoption. In the coming years, we'll see capabilities even more powerful than tracking your general attention. Pretty soon, we'll actually be able to tell what specifically you are paying attention to. A group down at the University of Austin, Texas has been in the news lately for their groundbreaking work with AI and fMRI, showing that they can decipher word for word what lecture a person is listening to from brain scans alone. In one experiment, they could tell which presenter a person was listening to if there were two lectures going on at the same time. If this is scaring you, you're not alone. People are already talking about regulating neurotechnology to protect the public. Columbia University published a neural rights initiative with five categories, and Nita Farenhani talks about the right to cognitive liberty in her book. We need to start asking the question, would we even want these neurotechnology devices in the classroom? Most people would worry about the implications this would have for children or adults in those type of settings. How would constantly tracking someone's attention affect their ability to relax and learn properly? It's natural for the mind to take breaks. Would adults or children be punished for that? And what about the people that have atypical brain patterns like ADHD? Joe seems to think that this would actually improve performance in the classroom. They I don't want it around that my kids. Nationwide, first of all, the problem would be it would work. Yeah. And kids would get way better because you'd yeah. make them work. Yeah. You'd force them, like, you'd, you'd hold them accountable. There wouldn't be any hiding. It turns out that the Brain Co. classroom experiment featured in the video was actually shut down by the Chinese government after parents of the school were concerned about the media attention they were getting from the US. But this hasn't stopped other Chinese companies from developing similar attention tracking devices, like this EEG system fit into a hard hat for construction workers and train conductors that I saw at CES this year. So can this technology read your thoughts? For now, these devices are analyzing overall brain patterns which reflect wakefulness and attention and cannot tell what you are thinking beyond that surface level. But I will tell you that advances in AI and FNIRs and other hardware that are being developed right now 
will make it possible to detect word for word what you are listening to within the next five years. Within the next 10 years, neurotechnology may very well be able to read your brain quite accurately, thought for thought with, and this is an important point, well-trained algorithms that the individuals choose to train on with such technology. Does this technology actually make you more intelligent right now? Well, there are a lot of different types of intelligence. The best area of improvement with this technology right now is the development of self-awareness. If you can be self-aware of your focus patterns, then you can pay attention better, absorb more information, and likely perform better on tests. The Chinese school and students said that they got better grades, but I never saw any official studies published on that. But I think that it does make you more intelligent on a neurofeedback self-awareness level. Now that's only if this technology doesn't become a hindrance or a distraction, which I can tell you does happen with this tech right now. You can have bad sensors, Bluetooth issues, contaminated data. These are all issues that I've personally run into when training with my neurofeedback clients using similar devices. And I'm sure at this school they had similar issues but they just didn't report on it. And what are people's rights with this technology? That's where Nita Farinhani is doing such a great job in talking about these issues in Battle for Your Brain, in the Wall Street Journal, on stage at TED, and with other policy developers to create guidelines for such technology. With the development of EEG headphones and earbuds, this technology will become more pervasive over the next couple of years. And within five years, I think we're gonna see some big advances in hardware that uses near-infrared light to detect blood flow patterns of the brain, and even portable MRI machines that can see the architecture of people's individual brains, and increasingly powerful software that's able to analyze the data and deliver practical information from it. What happens next is anyone's guess. If you want to learn more about the Focus Calm device, take a look at this video here where I interview Max Newland of the American Division of Brain Co. And I'll see you on the other side.